So hi, uh, welcome to another AutoCAD tutorial. In this tutorial we're just going to look at a sprocket and uh, how we go about drawing up a spro sprocket. Uh, at the end I'll add some visualizations, some materials and, and do a quick render um, just of a, a static picture um, and just get it looking so that uh, something that you could add to a portfolio of work. So let's jump on in and see where we end up. So we're going to start off by just doing a simple uh, circle um, and we're going to do a circle with radius 61.5 mil. And what we'll do is we'll just zoom in a little bit and we're going to go straight off and do another circle uh, inside this one and this one's going to be 49.5 mil. From there we need to draw a line from the centre vertically up that stops on the uh, exactly on the perimeter of the outside circle and for that we will need to change or uh, make one of our object snaps available to us and that's going to be our quadrant. Mine's already selected here so I can go straight ahead, uh, grab a line, uh, go from the centre and then just go straight up and you'll see that the quadrant object snap is active. Uh, from there I'll just trim out the bit that I don't need, which is that section, and I'm going to offset this line now 3mm either side of where it is. So select the offset, I'm going to type in 3mm, hit enter, and then I'll select the object, go to the right hand side, and then go to the left hand side. Straight away we can delete the middle line. Um, and then if you zoom in down at the bottom of those two new lines, you can see they're not quite matching up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend those lines out to the inside circle. And then if you go to the top, uh, you'll find that the uh, lines just come out beyond the outside circle. So I'm going to trim those back so they finish right on the perimeter of the circle. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to array these two lines around the center of this circle. So I'll do a polar array. Uh, choose the center of the circle. Uh, obviously our new window opens up and we're going to array them around 14 times. There we go. We can close the array down. Now what we want to do is we want to do a three point arc from this point here into the middle of this section here and then we'll go back out to the top of this line. Uh, the problem is we've got no object snaps that will give us the center of this line. So what we'll do is we'll just trim out this section here and this section here and now we'll have a midsection. So if we choose our three point arc Go from the end point of that line to the midpoint of that line and to the end point of that line. Now what we need to do is we need to trim out just these two sections here, the curved sections. One section there and on the right hand side so that we've got a curve leading into a straight. The other thing that we can trim out now is we can trim out all these little sections around here and we can now start to delete the inside circle and we can start to delete all these uh, lines here. There we go, and we can just hit delete. Now what we want to do is we want to join these three sections. So I'm just going to type in join, hit enter, and then I'll just select these three lines here, here, and here. Enter to select them, and we'll now find that they are all joined together. And we're going to do another polar array now. Um, we're going to polar array this new joined object, again, around the center of our circle. 
and again we're going to polar array it 14 times. Once we're happy, close the array down and we can go straight in. And we're now we're gonna have to or we're going to now build up the center hole where our shaft uh, would go through it. And we're gonna I'm gonna do it in a way that's got some uh, sections that would allow it to sit around uh, an actual shaft. So to start off with we're gonna draw a circle at the center point again. Um, and this one's going to be of radius 17. And straight away we'll do another one at radius 14. So we now need to create the sort of keyway sections. Um, and the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to draw a line from the center of this circle. I'm going to use my quadrant again and go up to the outside of the, the the circle. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate that through 15 degrees. So there I'm rotating it around the center point, 15 degrees. And now what I'll do is I'll array that around the center as before, but this time we'll array it 12 times. Click close array. Now what I'm going to use is I'm going to use the extrim function, so extrim. Uh, select the extrim, and with a left click, I'm just going to click the uh, select the inside circle, and then just left click inside that circle, and we have our trimmed out section. What we now need to do is trim out alternate. Uh, keyways. So I'm going to use trim. And first off, I'm going to trim out the top of that section in the bottom, and we're going to just do alternate all the way around. Which will simulate our keyway. Um, we also need to put in this model uh, two fixing holes. Uh, one I'm going to put in the, directly in the middle here, and one in the directly in the middle here. Uh, to do that, again, I'm just going to draw a line. I'm going to go from the midpoint here, uh, and I'm going to use the quadrant again at the top. This will give us a construction line, which we will be able to just put a circle on there, right in the middle, and we're going to do a radius of 5 mil. Now I want this uh, hole to be in exactly the same position on the other side. So I think the simplest way would be just to mirror it. Um, I'm going to select the object that I want to mirror uh, with my math left mouse button. Uh, once I've selected it, just hit enter. And now we need to put in our mirror line. So our mirror line for, for this particular uh, mirror is going to be the center point. And then I'm just going to come out 90 degrees to the right hand side. Uh, and uh, find a, an object snap exactly 90 degrees. I'm going to use the quadrant again and just left cl mouse click. And then you always get this opportunity to erase the source object. We don't want to do that, so we'll select no. I can then delete the construction line. And now what I can do is go around trimming out uh, some of the sections, which will then leave us our teeth for our sprocket. So there we have it. Now any any well designed sprocket will have a couple of chamfers on each of the teeth, one on the top and one on the bottom. Uh, for me, I think the simplest way for this would be to extrude a disc, put two chamfers on the edge of the disc, and then using the intersects function to uh, to basically subtract one from the other. So to do this, select a circle. Uh, we'll go for the midpoint and we'll take it right up to the middle of the, the top dead center tooth. Um, and then what we can do is start to work in our three dimensional view. 
So I'm going to go straight in and extrude the outside circle and I'm going to extrude it, extrude it into a disc. And the extrusion uh, thickness is going to be 6mm. You can see that if we change our wireframe over to conceptual. Um, and straight away what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that off to one side. There we go. This will make life a little bit easier for putting the radiuses on and then press pulling the sprocket out in a minute. So first of all, let's put those chamfered edges on. I'm going to select the edge that I want to chamfer. Once I've got it, left click. I'm going to then uh, put a distance in there. Distance is 1.5 and uh, 5 mil. So 1.5 mil, 1 mil down and 1. Point, sorry, 5 mil in. When we're happy, I'm going to go around and I'm going to do the same on the bottom. So click chamfer, select the edge that I want to chamfer. Once I've selected it, hit enter. Again, I'm going to give it a distance 1.5 and 5, and then enter at the end. And there we have our disc uh, that is we've got the chamfer on both edges. Also, I'll go back to my top down view. Um, and I'm going to move, this will help me move it, uh, move the disc directly in the center of the disc. And I'll be able to move it directly over the center of the sprocket again. Before we do that, we will press pull the sprocket into its uh, thickness. So once it's all highlighted, I'm going to select it with a left click and then I'll give it a six mil extrusion. And now we'll go top down again and we'll do the move of the disc over the top of the sprocket. You can now see we've got the uh, sprocket and the disc sat on top of each other. And we can use our solid intersect function. Um, we're going to select with the left mouse button the sprocket, and then we'll select the disc again with the left mouse button. And then once you're happy and you've got both selected, you can hit enter. And there we have our sprocket. It's got our spline shaft coming through the middle, or the hole for it anyway, and then two fixing holes either side of it. It's also got the chamfers on each of the teeth and we're now ready to start doing the visualizations. So for our visualizations, we will go across to our tab, which is our visualize tab. And we, to start off with, we need to give it a material. So here's our materials window. Um, and I'm going to look for a nice shiny zinc material. The zinc chromate is quite a good one. So once I found it, I'm going to click this up arrow, which add materials to the document. And now I'm going to select the sprocket with the left mouse button, come over right mouse button on the uh, material in this uh, uh, document materials and then assign to selection. I can close that down now. And it looks like nothing's happened, but you need to swap your visual style to realistic. And it looks not great at the moment because, of course, it's very dark. There's a little bit of shininess going there. Uh, and we need to set up our render. So we'll, from the render size, we're going to render it in uh, full HD, so 1920 by 1080. And then from our render drop down, we will choose our render environment and exposure. And we'll get this window here. We'll turn our environment on. Um, we're going to use a custom background. We'll click the background button to launch that dialog. Uh, the drop down for type, we will have it uh, a solid. And then if the, where well, you've got color options in the bottom of this dialog box, just click the, uh, the, the actual colored bar and you'll get this window pop up.
Uh, I'm going to choose a lighter blue. Light colours seem to work quite well. Once I've done that, click OK. It then changes this a colour option. Again OK. And then it's also now changed our background in our model. I would choose one of the highlights. It's a bit of trial and error depending on the component. Um, sharp highlights I'll go with. And um, I'm going to increase our warmth to about 9000 for our white balance. Um, and then we just click our render to size and we'll see what we get. So not, not, uh, it's, we've got a lot of, uh, a lot of overexposure on the top so we might want to dial the uh, white balance down and then we'll just render it again still again a lot of white balance so we'll then uh, change our our sharp to highlights to a cool light render it again there we go that's a little bit better and we've got that now rendered with our material selection and this may be used in a later date to create a full visualization not only of it of a, the whole the whole um, assembly but also it might um, you might be able to do link these together so you've got sort of plan profile views as well as the full assembly view so that's the end of this tutorial uh, thank you for going along with it. I hope it's worked for you um, and I hope you followed it. Cheers.